Good evening, everyone. If you'd grab your hymn books real quick for me and turn into hymn number 346. Hymn number 346, What a Wonderful Savior. You're going to have to work with me. I'm not as comfortable with these songs, but they're good. So let's just praise the Lord together. Hymn number 346, What a Wonderful Savior. Christ has for sin atonement made. What a wonderful Savior. We are in Him. The price is paid. What a wonderful Savior. Wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Jesus. What a wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord who I am the cleansing blood what a wonderful Savior the runs of my soul to God what a wonderful Savior alright let's try this one more time at the beginning I don't know the song as well so we'll try it one more time at the beginning, and then we'll do the last verse, all right? As the intro, please, and then we'll begin. Christ has for sin atonement made what a wonderful Savior. We are redeemed, Christ is made what a wonderful Savior, the wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Jesus. What a wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. On the last verse, to him I've given all my heart. What a wonderful Savior. Savior, tis Jesus, my Jesus. What a wonderful Savior is Jesus, my Lord. Amen. And Brother Mike, I'm watching you. <laughs> All right. Well, good to see you tonight. And we're excited that uh, Brother and Mrs. War are here. And uh, glad you're here. Amen. Amen. Uh, good to have our guests back. Uh, we're here this morning. Good to see you again. God bless you. Amen. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer as we start this morning. Father, we thank you for your goodness and thank you for um, just yourself, Lord. You are wonderful. And as we thought about this morning, how Obed Edom just wanted to be around you. And God, help us to have that heart for you, please. Thank you for this evening and for the service. And God, we pray for your presence and your help and, and your blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. So I agree with Pastor on most of what he said about we're glad that the wars are here. I'm glad Brother War is here. Amen, Where's Mrs. War? She harasses me too much, and I never do anything ever have I ever harassed Mrs. War. Okay, I'm lying in church. Amen. She's not even paying attention. Amen. All right, so the wars, of course, will be with us tonight. Um, this, this Friday, um, May 12th at 9 a.m., um, is going to be our end-of-the-year homeschool field day at the camp. Uh, so sign up for that, please. There will be no youth group this Friday, and tickets for the teen formal banquet are on sale now. See Mrs. Tullis for that. Next week, um, there is a screening of a Redeeming Hope at Cal Calvary Baptist Church in, in Dundalk, Maryland. That's Brother Garraway's project that he's been working That's on. His That's his baby. So it's a, it's a film, it's a movie that he's made, and that'll be on May 19th at 7. This is a presentation from Remnant Ministries and the Gospel Film Project. So if you're interested in that, see Pastor Connor on any information on that. 
Uh, our graduate, uh, okay, so Independent Baptist Church, they're having their graduation this Thursday um, at, at 7 p.m. up at Independent, and I believe it's Brenda, uh, Chris, and Savannah Knoyer. Independent Baptist Bible College. Amen. Amen. All right. But it's at Independent Baptist Church. Correct. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Which you're a graduate of. Which I am a graduate of, and so is Brother War. And many people, who in here is a graduate of Independent Baptist Bible College? Oh, I won't mean you. Amen. I thought there was more than that. Where's Al? Right behind you. Pal, where's Al? Right behind you. Okay. Okay, good. Can we raise your hands behind me? Oh, okay. Amen. I'm like, I know there's more than that. Okay. Amen. All right. Um, Brother Tim. Brother uh, Tim. Fabian. Okay, amen. So, okay, and then the graduation for our church, our kids, is June 3rd at 11 a.m., and that is going to be Elena, Brianna, Emily, and Malena. All girl graduates, you know. I got, I get in trouble for messing up her name. Malena, Malena. Okay, amen. All right, and then John is super excited about this one. On May 27th at 1 p.m., there is a baby shower for Miss Jamie Lakovic. And so, so, so there's a sign-up sheet for that. And what else, Mrs. Connor, am I missing? A sign-up sheet. There will be a sign. There will be a sign-up sheet. And we don't normally do this, but they're registered at Walmart and Amazon.com. And John thinks that the baby is going to need hunting equipment, fishing equipment. Um, pontoon boat. Oh, yeah. A pontoon boat motor or fuel filter. Okay, amen. All right. So there will be a shine-up sheet this week. And I'll quit talking so Brother Warkin have more time to preach. Amen. <laughs> Once again, grab your hymn books and turn to hymn number 18. Hopefully we'll do a little better on this one, mostly me. Uh, hymn number 18, 1, 8. Holy Bible, Book Divine. Holy Bible, Book Divine, precious treasure thou art mine, mine to tell me I came, mine to teach me what I am, mine to chide me when I roam, mine to show a Savior's love, mine thou art to guide and guard, mine to punish or reward, mine to comfort in distress, suffering in this wilderness, mine thou own the living faith, man can try. Tell the joys to come and the rebel sinners do. Oh, thou holy book divine, precious treasure thou art mine. Amen. This time, uh, Brother uh, John will lead us in prayer as we uh, receive the offering. Heavenly Father, we do love you. We do thank you uh, for this, this great week that you've given us, Lord. Uh, be with Brother Ward tonight as he preaches uh, your word, Lord. Uh, we thank you for um, all that you do for us, provide for us, Lord. We look forward to just giving a little bit of that tithe and offering back, Lord. Um, bless it in the way that you can, Lord. We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen.
you, Jail. I was saying hi to Jail on the way in, and she wouldn't talk to me. Now I know why. She was nervous and thinking about that. Great job. Amen. Well, hey, listen, we're excited uh, uh, that Brother and Mrs. War are here, and uh, they've been in a lot of churches lately, and I think this is the last church they're headed home uh, tomorrow, and uh, praise the Lord, they were able to get a house, and uh, so you get, they got to get that, that all set up, and, and but praise the Lord for that. Pray for them, they still need to get a car, and um, I don't know if it, that's any easier now than it has been, but... Uh, God's got something for him, amen. So I was telling the church this morning that uh, we were called to preach at junior camp. And when he went to junior camp, it wasn't like, yeah, I'm going to junior camp. It was more, yeah, I got some time off. I'll go, I'll, I'll help, right? And uh, God got a hold of his heart. I believe it was Brother Dunlap, wasn't it? You remember? Oh, preaching? No, it's a uh, Harvey. Oh, Dan Andre, Dan Andre, yep. And uh, <clears throat> so, uh, so praise the Lord, and things turned around after that for you, and uh, I guess for you and your family, amen. And uh, uh, I found out today that Cole is kind of like um, Michelle at her church. She's in charge of all the BBS decorations, so y'all can talk and cry together. Amen. So, but, uh, but praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Uh, just exciting to see God work. And now, so now he's been preaching or pastoring for 17 years. And uh, just God's so good. So yesterday was his spiritual birthday. And so he's 39 years old now. Amen. And uh, it's... Um, it's exciting to talk to Brother War. He uh, has no regrets of serving God and, and living for God. And, and so we praise the Lord for that. So he's just, I'm not going to sing. I was prepared to sing a special, but I'm just not ready yet. So, Brother War, why don't you come? Amen. Love you, man. Amen. It's good to be here. Who's excited to be in church? I thought this was, I must have taken a wrong turn to a Methodist church. Who's excited to be here? Yeah. Amen. That's what I want to hear. Amen. So this is, what's that? Brother Rich. So this, so we, in three and a half weeks, this is our 12th church. So number 12. So we kept the best to last. Amen. Yeah. Amen. I hope you're not videoing this. I get fired. Amen. But, um. But I'm glad to be here. And I want to tell you guys something. So this past, well, we're on this furlough, and we're up in New Jersey, which was about two weeks ago. I won my nephew. He's, when I, last time I saw him, he was 16 years old, and he's 25 now, and I won him to the Lord. And so, you know, it was exciting about that, right? So that was on Friday. And Sunday, he was in church with me. Amen? Now watch this. So then the following Sunday, oh, that first Sunday when I was preaching, he was there. Luann was there. I was surprised Luann was there, but Luann was in church, and then my sister, my sister, her husband, Tyler, which is my nephew, and his girlfriend were there. So we had a whole pew filled, okay? They have short, they have short pews. And so then, um, so then, next, this past Sunday, you know, his girlfriend didn't want to go, my sister didn't go, because she was doing something, but he still went. You see what I'm saying? That's big. He could have said, well, you know, I'm not going to go, but he went. And listen to this now. So he was reading, you know how you always tell new converts, read what? Romans and Gospel of St. John, amen? And so that's what I told him. Where did he go? Where do you think? Revelation. Exactly, Revelation, all right? So, he, so he, wrote, he wrote to me after the Sunday morning service. He said, Uncle Chris, you're not going to believe this. And I go, what? And he said, well, I didn't say what because it was a text, amen? But he said, hey, Uncle Chris, he said, I read Revelation, and I couldn't understand what he was talking about. I had so many questions on what it was saying. And he says, you're not going to believe it. When I went to church on Sunday, because that was on Saturday, when I went to church on Sunday, the pastor pre preached, he didn't say preached, he said, the pastor talked about exactly what I read and answered every one of my questions. Now that's God, amen. And so he's excited. He'll be, he's in church right now. And so that's exciting, amen. And so you pray for him. His name's Tyler. 
had the opportunity to talk to his girlfriend about the Lord. Um, also, my, my, uh, my niece, my, my sister's daughter and her boyfriend a little bit. And so God is good. Listen, take every opportunity you have. Amen? And so go ahead and take your Bibles, turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Now I'm going to tell you something about this sermon. This is true. I'm not just saying this. It's true that I've preached this sermon several times now. But God gave me this sermon. I prayed, God, what do you want me to preach at Patuxent? And I'm, I'm serious about this. What do you want me to preach at Patuxent? And then I was reading in 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And God grabbed, grabbed a hold of my heart and this verse. And if you, can, if you can get a hold of this verse, I'm telling you, it could change your life. I'm not kidding. It, it changed my life. Even how I look at things now is totally different than I looked at before. But look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And if you please stand for the reading of God's word, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And we read uh, verses 14 and 15, but really, listen, look at me now. Play, uh, pay very close attention to uh, verse 15, all right? But we'll start in 14. For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge that if one die for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for, what's it say? Don't you thank God that Jesus didn't just die for the people over there, but he died for all of us. Amen. Because if he only died for the people over there, the people on this side would be in a heap of trouble. But look at verse 15 again. And that he died for all. Now watch. Pay attention. This is so important. And I'm telling you, this could change your life. If you can grab a hold of this. That they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, any, uh, themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Let's read it one more time. And that he died for all. That they which live, who? Those that live in Christ. That's what talking about. Those that have been born again. Should not, henceforth, what? After you've been born again. Live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father God, again, I do thank you for the opportunity to be in church this evening. And Father, I pray, Lord, as you spoke to my heart about this verse. And it was for this church, Lord. Father, I pray, Lord, that people's hearts would be open to receive your word. And, God, that you use the Holy Spirit of God to speak to hearts. And, Father, that we would be changed through your word. And, Father, I do pray, Lord, especially if there's somebody here today that's never truly trusted in Jesus Christ and him alone as their Savior. Father, I pray that today would be that day. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. So the question that I pose to you this evening is this. Who are you living for? Who are you living for? Are you living for yourself or are you living for Christ? So look at the verse again. And, we're, and keep your place here because we'll be going back there several times. But look at verse 15 again. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. I mean, isn't it very clear who we're supposed to be living for? Hey, if you've been born again, who should you be living for, folks? Jesus Christ. Not for self anymore. Hey, before I was saved, before I was saved, how I made decisions was this. Hey, what's, and think about this before you're saved. What's best for me? Amen? Hey, what makes me happy? What would, how will I gain out of this? Well, how will this benefit me? Right? But once I got saved, shouldn't it be different? Shouldn't I say, hey, what pleases him? What does he want? And not what I want? Amen? And so I want you to think about your life. What if God told you this? Okay? What if God told you to drop everything you're doing and go to the mission field? What would you do? What would you do? How far would you go for Jesus Christ? And to what extent would you go? You say, well, uh, I would give up anything for Jesus Christ. Well, listen, we don't give up anything. Amen? Do you understand what I'm saying? But we gain everything when we serve him. So how far would you go? And to what extent would you go for Jesus Christ? Remember those pictures? And young folks probably will not remember this, but we would, you know, the adults will understand. Remember ISIS 
And they would put a gun to somebody's head and say, if you deny Jesus Christ, we'll not shoot you. But if you refuse to deny him, then we'll shoot you. Right? Remember the stories? And they even showed pictures. And what if you were that next person? What would you do? What would you do? Would you be willing to die for Jesus Christ? Amen? Now watch. If you're willing to die for him, then why don't you live for him? Amen or not? Now remember, this is God talking to me, the Holy Spirit talking to my heart. But I want you to take that, that spiritual mirror this, this evening, and I want you to look at you. What are you willing to give for Jesus Christ? Do you live for yourself or do you live for him? Look in your mirror. Where are you at with Christ? Because honestly, only you know and God knows really where you're at. God looks at the intents of the heart. Why do you do what you do? Do you do things to be seen of men or to serve God? Amen? Even after I got saved, you know, it was like 70% of still my will, and only about 30% of what God wanted me to do. How many people here, don't raise your hand. <laughs> How many people here, you know, you pray about something, you know, God wants you to do this, but you do that anyway? Amen or not? I mean, maybe I'm the only one. You ever hear people say that to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord? Hmm. Let's look at that. So if a person is your Lord... He rules in your life. That Lord dictates what you do. He makes the laws. He makes the decisions. And what do you do as, as a, support, a subordinate to the, to the Lord? What do you do? You obey him. Now, there are many people that are saved. But how many people that are saved is Jesus Christ really their Lord? Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 20, or excuse me, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20. Keep your place in 2 Corinthians, because we'll go back there. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 20. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 20. For ye are bought with a what? Price. What was that price? They spat on Jesus Christ. They beat him. They whipped him. He shed his blood for you and I. They took and they nailed spikes through his hands and his feet for you, for me. Not for him, for us he did that. And he died for you and I. What was the price to be paid so that we could be bought? It was the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. How many people here would say that Jesus suffered for me. Put your hand up if you believe that. Jesus suffered for me. He shed his blood for me. He took those spikes in his hands and his feet for me. He died for me. Amen? And if that's true, which it is true, and we truly believe that, then why aren't we living for him? Look at the verse again, verse 20. For you are bought with a price, now watch what it says, therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit. What's the next three words? Which are whose? Amen. Listen to me now. If you're sitting here and you've been born again, you have been bought with a price, the blood of Jesus Christ, you do not belong to yourself anymore. You belong to Jesus Christ. We're supposed to live for him and not for self anymore. Listen, he should what? He should increase in our life, and we should do what? We should decrease. And for Christians, it seems like our priorities all are out of whack. We don't belong to ourselves, but we belong to him, Jesus Christ. Look at verse, uh, excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15 again. Let this sink in. Let this verse sink in. Matter of fact, you should write it down and mark it. I don't usually ask people to mark in their Bibles, but that's my new life's verse. It's an amazing verse. 
And it's so plain and so easy to understand. Look at verse 15, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15, and that he died for who? All. All. That they which live should not henceforth. Listen, after you get saved, you're not supposed to live for yourself any longer. Uh, not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Live for Jesus Christ and not for self. Look at Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1. Philippians chapter 1, look at verse 21. And most of you will know this verse, very famous verse. Philippians chapter 1, verse 21. Philippians chapter 1, verse 21. For to me to live is, say it again, Christ. Amen. Say it with me. Say the verse with me. For to me to live is Christ. Say it again. For to me to live is Christ. Now, I'll ask you a question. Is that true? Is your life about Jesus Christ or is it about you? Who do you truly live for? My life is devoted to serve my Lord. Amen? And I want to serve God with the last breath that I have, with the last ounce of strength that I have. I want to serve God. It's my whole desire in my heart to serve him. And it should be every Christian. That shouldn't be a peculiar thing. That should be for every Christian. Look at uh, Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Colossians chapter 3. Look at verses 1 and 2. Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 and 2. If ye then be risen with Christ, who here is born again? Okay, then who's raised with Christ? We are, Amen. If that ye then be risen with Christ, what does it say? Seek those things which are what? Above. Above where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Look what it says next. Set your affection on things above, eternal things, everlasting things. Look what it says. Not on things on the earth. Amen? Now, I am a fisherman. I love to fish, and I love to hunt, and I love to hike. But you tell me what a fishing pole has to do with eternity. Amen? Or a hunting rifle or a shotgun. What does it have? What about this? What about a video game? Tell me what that has to do with eternity. Nothing. And a lot of times, again, our pride is not what they ought to be. We need to seek those things and set our affection on what? Those things which are above, eternal things. Let me ask you a question. How many people here, you, know, you could raise your hand if you can do this, okay? Your tracks are short. Let's say, where are you going? There. It's one of your tracks, okay? Now watch closely. How many people can do this? So I think that's everybody. Everybody can do that? Okay, I'm not a mean person, honestly, I'm not. How many people can do that? So then why don't you? I am one of those guys, like, there's no time to fool around because, you know, Jesus is coming back soon, amen? And we need to be witnesses for him. And by the way, there's not a soul winner in this room. That might surprise you. I'm not. Pastor Connor's not. Brother Rich isn't. Nobody here. Jesus Christ is the soul winner. Amen. You see, all we are is messengers. And we deliver the most important message that the whole world could possibly fathom is the gospel of Jesus Christ. And folks, that all has take a lot of pressure off you and I. Why? Because all we are is a messenger. Once we hand over the track or or if we witness to somebody, it's between them and the Holy Spirit of God. Jesus Christ is the Savior. The Holy Spirit is the one that convicts their heart. Amen? And so it takes pressure of us. All we do is what we're supposed to do. Amen? And the rest is up to God. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. First Timothy chapter 6, <clears throat> look at verse 7. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 7, For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we can carry nothing out. Amen? Amen. Now, is that true? Yeah. Absolutely true. 
So, and I, again, we cannot carry our gold and our silver with us when we go to heaven. We, not, we cannot carry our houses or our cars. Now, you need silver or gold or dollars, you know, to pay your bills, and you need a car to get around, and you need a house or apartment to live in, sure. But again, where do they sit in the priorities of your life? Set your affections where? On things above, eternal things. There's certain that we can bring nothing out, amen? There's nothing we can take out of this world, but well, there is one thing. What, what can we take out, folks? Souls, amen? Amen, pastor. Souls, that's it. So when, and I don't know, you know, I know a few people here, but you guys, a lot of you guys I don't know very well. But when you guys have visitation, when you guys go out soul winning, go. How can we serve the Lord on this, on this earth? You say, well, I read my Bible. <laughs> that's not for God. That's for you. So I'm faithful to church. I'm there all the time. That's not for God. That's for you. Amen? How do we serve God? Listen, the local church is the, the training ground for the Christian. You work here. You serve here. And then, like, God called me to go someplace, then I go for God. Amen? But while I was here, I served. Hey, listen, I served under my pastor. I served the Lord here. Amen? Serve God. Listen to me now. The night cometh when what? No man can work. So serve God now. Give yourself to Jesus Christ to be used of God. So, again, we brought nothing into this world, and it's certain we can carry nothing out except for souls. How many people here you work with lost people? Amen. How many people you go to school with lost people? How many people live next to lost people or have lost family members? Listen, and I don't mean this anyway, but the truth is that if I didn't take the time to talk to Tyler, he'd still be lost. And you listen to me now, and this is true. You may be the only Bible that person ever reads that you know that's lost. And people watch you. And you live for Jesus Christ and have a testimony for Jesus Christ. And it means a lot for the cause of Christ. Because how I got saved 39 years ago yesterday was I saw it in somebody's life. And I didn't know what it was. I thought he was just a good person. But he was a Christian. He lived for Jesus Christ. He lived what he believed. And I, one day I walked up to him and I said to him, I said, JT, there's something different. I watched him for three months to try to figure out what he was. And I was a drunk. I was a sailor. I was a Navy, and I was a drunk. And I walked up to him, and I said to him, I said, JT, there's something different about you. And he goes, what do you mean? I said, I don't know. I said, but it's something that's good, and it's real, and I don't know what you have in your life, but I need it in mine. And he said to me, why don't you come down during lunch, and we'll talk about it. I said, okay. So we're in the same division, but different shops. And I went down to his shop during lunch, and he was eating a sandwich. And when he got done eating the sandwich, he took a Bible out of his desk and, uh, out of his desk and put it on top of his desk. And I thought, this guy's a Bible thumper. And I really, you, if you knew the way that I was, I really didn't want to hear it. It's like, whatever. But it's because he lived what he believed. Listen, when uh, I never, he would never go out drinking with us guys. He, I never saw him smoke a cigarette. He never... Uh, like we start telling bad, you know, dirty stories, whatever you want to call it, he would just walk away. He wouldn't have no part of it. He had a testimony for Jesus Christ. And I saw it. And because I saw what he lived for Jesus, I asked him what he had. Listen to me now. It is so important that you and I have a testimony for Jesus Christ. Not just in church, but everywhere we are. Amen? Look at Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, and, and just before we read, read this, I want you to understand that when we get saved, we should think differently, amen? We become a new creature in Christ. All things will pass away. Behold, that all become new, right? And so we should be thinking differently. Watch in uh, Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Look what it says. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies, what? A living sacrifice while you're, what? Alive. What's it say next? Holy, holy, what, being separated from the world? Holy, acceptable unto God, which is what? 
let me ask you this question, folks. Why is it reasonable? Why is it reasonable to be a living sacrifice to Jesus Christ? Why? We belong to him. He died for us. Tell me this. Who here can repay Jesus Christ what he's done for you? There is no way. But we should live in such a way to where we show our gratitude to our Lord, amen, and serve him for the rest of our life. Why? Because he died for me. He died for you. And we need to serve him. Look at... uh, Verse 12, uh, excuse me, chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 again. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Now watch this. Verse number 2. And be not, what? Conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed. To what? Be changed, right? (coughs) To be changed. How? What does it say in, in the Bible? To be transformed by the, what? Renewing of your mind, to think of things differently, to consider stuff differently, to look at things in a whole different way. Why? Because when I was lost, hey, what I wanted, but now that I'm saved, I should, des- I des- should desire what he wants. Amen? And by the way, as we grow in Christ, it shouldn't be to where it's like, well, i got to accept what he wants me to do, but it should be our desire to do his will. Amen? Think about this. When Jesus was in the garden, and he was sweating, as it were, what? Drops of blood. And what did he say to God the Father? He said, not my will, but what? Thine be done. And I want you to think about this. Jesus Christ is God, amen? Amen or not? So did he know he was going to go to the cross? Did he know there was anything going to stop that? There was nothing going to stop He knew that. He knew every feeling of the spikes that were going through his hands. He knew the feeling of the... the, the um, the crown of thorns being mashed on his brow. He knew every part of it. Now, why was he saying that? Not my will, but thine be done. If we're a Christian, we're supposed to be Christ-like. Who is our example? Jesus Christ. He was saying it for you and I. That in our lives we say, not my will, but thine be done. Amen? And that's where we need to be, folks. Not my will, but thine be done. When we were in Florida... And God spoke to my heart. You know, everything that I had, everything that God had told me to do in Florida was done. I mean, our church was growing. We, we did have a nice building there. It was amazing. We went from a storefront building of 900 square feet. We had bought and purchased a building. It was 8,800 square feet, 10 times the size. It was growing. We're seeing people saved. I mean, it was just amazing. But everything God had told me to do was done. So I'm like, okay, do you want me to stay or do you want me to go? You know, because I'm a missionary. So I started praying in my devotions. Very important to do your devotions, amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Because God will talk to you. And so I was praying for about two weeks in my devotions, God, do you want me to stay here or do you want me to go? And God spoke to my my heart and he said, I want you to go to Italy to work with the U.S. military, but also to reach the Italians for Christ. Now, remember, at the time, I was 53 years old. Uh... We had a house. We had two, car- three cars, actually. Um, our church was doing great. And I'm like, now watch. This is not um, a lack of faith. It's called being sure. Why? Because I desired to do God's will. And I said, God, <laughs> it was like Gideon. I threw the fleece out there. God, are you sure? Is this what you want me to do? Do you think it's important to know? Amen. So I was praying, God, is this what, it's next, like in my devotions again, now I'm praying, God, are you sure? Is this what you want me to do? I'm praying over and over, God, are you sure? Do you want me to go to Italy? Are you sure? Is this what you want me to do? Now go to 1 Chronicles chapter 28. And I'll show you how God works. It's amazing. So I had been doing my devotions. At that time, I was doing my devotions in the New Testament. Hadn't been in the Old Testament. I was in the New Testament where I was studying to preach also was in the New Testament. It wasn't in the Old Testament. And I'm praying this prayer, God, are you sure? Do you want me to go to Italy? Are you sure that's what you want me to do? Okay? And he answers me. This is true, okay? Now, if God spoke to me audibly, I start wondering about me, oh, man. But he spoke to my heart and said, he gave me a, a, a book, chapter, and verse to go to. You know, a reference. I'm like, okay. So I went there. 
And you ever get those goosebumps that God gives you, the Holy Spirit gives you those goosebumps? Watch. So I'm asking God, what am I, I'm saying, God, do you want me to go? Is this what you want me to do? All right, are you sure this is what you want me to do? And he gives me this reference after, I don't know how long it was, a few days or whatever, a couple weeks, whatever it was. It was definite. This is where I want you to go in the Bible. So I went to this verse. So look at 1 Chronicles chapter 28 and look at verse 20. Remember what I'm asking God. Do you want me to do this? 1 Chronicles 28 verse 20. And David said unto Solomon his son, be strong and of good courage. And what? Now, let me see. Did I interpret that correctly? Is it go ahead and do it? <laughs> it says do it. <laughs> Amen. Look what it says next. Fear not, nor be dismayed, for the Lord God, even my God, will be with thee. He will not fail thee, nor forsake thee, until thou hast finished all the work for the, house, or the, for the service of the house of the Lord. Amen? And answer the prayer. And so you know what we did? Is we went to Italy, went there for eight and a half years and served God, and God did amazing things. While we were there, we saw 96 people come to Christ in eight and a half years. And I had the great privilege of baptizing 70 people. Amen? Amen? And that's what God can do. Listen to me now. If you obey him, if you obey him. What? Not my will, but thine be done. Amen. You listen to me now. It would have been a lot easier just staying in Florida. But you know what I told my wife? And she knew it about been a lot easier too, trust me. But I told my wife, I said, listen to me now. I know this is God's will. And if I disobey God, then I might as well quit the ministry. Because how could I be in a church and preach and say, listen, when God calls you, you go. When God tells you to do something, you need to obey him if I'm not doing it myself. And I think sometimes in the ministry we get very comfortable, or even just in our lives we get very comfortable in our own little world. Amen? And we need to break out of our comfort zone and start asking God, what, he, what do you want me to do? Amen? What do you want me to do, God? Listen to me now. God has a ministry. If you're saved, God has a ministry for every person in here. He has a ministry for you. Ask God, start living for him. Ask him what he wants to do, and he'll start, he'll start giving you things to do. Amen? And listen, and this is something I said is so important to understand. Is when, we, when I was here, and if pastor said to me, you know, Brother Ward, can you clean the bathroom? What would I say? Sure. I mean, I would do anything, right? I mean, I'm not just, I would do anything. Why? It didn't matter to me. This is the need, whatever I, if he said to Brother Rich, hey, Brother Rich, you're preaching Sunday. Brother, were you cleaning the bathroom? Great. I never had any animosity toward that. Do you understand that? That cleaning, cleaning the bathroom is just as important as preaching here. Why? Because it's all serving God. It all works together. The whole mission of the church is to reach souls with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And then to train them to do what? The same thing. And so this whole thing works together. You guys are going to be having VBS soon? You should be excited about that. <clears throat> be excited to see what, and be praying about it now to see what God's going to do. I got saved at 25 years old. And I wish that I would have got saved when I was a child. And never, amen, Pastor? Because you got, how old were you when you got saved? 20, I was 25. And we have to carry around baggage that children that got saved in Always lived for God, never had to carry around. That's the kind of testimony I wish I had. Amen? So what if those children get saved to VBS and start living for God? You know what? You have a huge part in that. So be excited about it. Be used of God. Because honestly, honestly, if you think about it this way, when a person gets saved, why doesn't God just pull them out of here? We're left on this earth for one reason, that's to glorify God. And the best way to glorify God is to tell other people about his son, Jesus Christ. Amen? So be used of God. Go back to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. And again, pay attention to the verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 15. And that he died for all. That they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. 
I don't know if the Holy Spirit spoke to your heart like he's spoken to me about this verse, but I can't get away from it. Jesus died for me. Jesus died for me. So when I've been born again, I shouldn't live unto myself anymore. I should live for him that died for me and rose again. Amen? Let me show you something. And I have a question for you. This is what Jesus did for you. Amen? This is what he did for you. Now what are you willing to do for him? Amen? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, God, I do thank you for your word. And Father, how you spoke to my heart about 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 15. And Father, you know my desire is to live for you with the rest of my life and with my whole life, to do your will in my life, to do whatever you have for me, God. With the last breath that I have, with the last of ounce of strength that I have, Lord, that I want to serve you. Now, Father God, I pray for each person here this evening, Lord, that their desire would be to live for you, God. Not for self anymore. Not for self anymore, but for you, God. To live for Jesus Christ, who died for them and rose again. Father, I pray, Lord, that you'd work in hearts during the invitation. Use the Holy Spirit of God to work in hearts. And I pray this in Jesus' name. With your eyes closed and your heads bowed, nobody looking around. And look into your own heart. Listen, you know and God knows where you stand with Jesus Christ. And by the way, I don't mean this in a mean way at all, but you can fool a lot of people. But you cannot fool God. He knows exactly where you're at. How many people would say here, I know in my life I can live more for Jesus Christ. Just slip up your hand. I know I can live more for Jesus Christ. Amen. You know what? My hand is up too because so can I. We can all do more, live more for Jesus and live less for self. We can all do it. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, folks. Maybe there's somebody sitting here this evening. Look in your heart. You say, Brother War, I heard a message tonight. But I don't know for sure. I'm not 100% sure that if I was to die, I'd go to heaven. I'm not 100% sure of that. Just slip up your hand. I'm not 100% sure. Is anybody like that here this evening? Slip up your hand. Is there anybody like that? I'm not 100% sure. I want to go to heaven, but I'm not sure. Anybody like that? Amen. If you please stand with your eyes closed and your heads bowed. And as the music begins, what I ask you to do is come up and get along with God. Come on up. You can come up without the music. That's fine. Get along with God. Come on, slip out of your chairs and come up and get along with God. Jesus Christ, I want to live for you. Make a commitment this evening. Commit to God that I will live for your son, Jesus Christ, for the rest of my life. I will, live, I will do your will and not my own. Jesus died for you. We need to live for him, folks.
Amen. Hey, just one thing more to understand. When you come to church, and who's ever preaching is preaching the word of God, and the Holy Spirit of God grabs a hold of your heart, and then you walk out of the doors and you forget what was said inside and how the Holy Spirit worked in your heart, it's not ever going to help you. The things that you hear in the church house are things that you should consider, things that you should chew on and think about and ponder on those things. And then remember that nothing can ever help us if we're just hearers of the word, but we're not doers. Remember the Bible says, happier that what? Do these things. Not just because you know them, but because you do them. Amen. Thank you. Maybe see it for just a moment. <clears throat> and a great message. Amen. That's really it. So, uh, hey, listen, we have uh, Sam coming tonight. And uh, Sam, um, Lori and I were, uh, had the privilege of visiting with Sam and on Tuesday. And uh, Sam trusted Christ as his Savior. Amen. And, uh, Amen. So, uh, we're excited for him. And uh, so I'm going to ask Sam to stand here with John and just come let him know that you're uh, excited that he got saved. Amen. Amen. So praise the Lord. You know, he uh, was telling me that um, the Lord's been working on his heart about, you know, going to church. And he was driving by the cowboy carnival. And he says, well, I'm a cowboy. <laughs> and that'd be a great thing to go to. And so, so praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Well, Brother Mrs. Ward, we're going to hang around for a few minutes. And uh, you got any prayer cards? Uh, I think from the back. Up. Okay. And um, if I get a prayer card from Brother War, that'd be awesome. Great to have you again tonight. Thank you for coming. God bless you. Her, her mom uh, had a stroke on Christmas Day oh. and then another one on New Year's. Wow. And uh, so she's still getting over that, but she's walking around and doing really good. I, I praise the Lord for that. So amen. Well, good to see you again tonight. All right, well, let's all stand and come by. Let uh, now, Brother Sam. You know what? We have Sam Condon, we have Sam Warren, we have Sam Leach. It's like a Sam's Club. You know? <laughs> I'm sorry. That was bad. Okay. All right. Amen. Brother Joe, why don't you uh, close us in prayer tonight, please? Yes, 